Hey guys, Taro here, and today I'm going to be trying a slightly different video format. As you may know, I've been playing a lot of Elite Armor recently, and I've been meaning to do a more in-depth shoutcast on them. But I've been waiting for the right replay to come along. I feel like I played that game uh, a couple days ago now, but unfortunately I deleted the replay. So what I'm going to be doing here is first-person view game of the game, and then I'll be interjecting some commentary on top of that. So please, once it's over, let me know what you think. So the starting build order is three Fox Grenadiers into the truck and then into the 221. Then you want to get your truck down as quickly as possible and upgrade it into the 223. Yeah, he's top 10 with Brits. So at the time of this recording, my opponent is rank 3 Brits and rank 33 US forces, so a real challenge for my skill level. When it comes to capping order, I'm still unsure what is optimal. This build is a bit more reliant on early fuel, so I tend to play a bit more defensively. Also, you don't have that fourth fox screen to back you up, so I generally don't get aggressive with the stern pioneers. Especially in this spawn, I want to cap up the map, get the wire down on the critical pieces of heavy cover, and then get my 221 out as quickly as possible. Why are his streams on Twitch? I don't know, he might not be streaming today, but set up into a defensive line when we reach the stream in the past we must take that first folks grenadier ready for action move out target captured no enemy caught forward the battle is about to commence so the fact that he's got a squad here makes me think it's pathfinders taking small arms fire on me chocolate thanks to the host Established defensive positions during capture. Ready to move. Make good your weapon. Grenadier. Do not engage unless fired upon. Mission accomplished. Disperse the squad there. Form up in the building. Fox Grenadier are on the line. Set up into a defensive line. So I hear some fences getting crushed through the fog of war, and at this point in the game that has to be the WC-51. So what I want to do is group my troops up together so the WC-51 can't get them in a one-on-one -on -one situation with a rifle squad side, which will really bully them off the maps. So I believe I heard the WC-51 on the left hand side of the map, so I figured I might as well send the rest of my troops to 3 on 1, the rifleman squad on the right. Pretty sure I heard a WC-51. So I'm a bit confused about the WC-51 not showing up. I've made it through the early game with about half the map under my control, and the 221 is hitting the field at a good timing, so I'm in a good position in this match. So now the 221's on the field, it's time to get aggressive. You can either use it to chase down lone squads on the edges of the map, or you can use it like I am here, and a big push, push with most of your units. Be careful with the 221 at this stage because before it gets the 223 upgrade, it's quite fragile and could easily die to things like 
D upgraded WC-51 M3 with the squad inside or perhaps the universal carrier. So the WC-51 finally shows up and I beat a hasty retreat. I assume that there's a squad of cavalry rifle inside, I don't know for sure. And they can mount squads quickly, even on retreat. And especially because I don't have my 221 nearby to defend these two squads, I just retreat straight away as soon as it appears on the map. So I'm going to be quite defensive with the 223, because at any point in time an M20 could show up and if it was too low on health, that shock M20 could just overwhelm it and kill it, and I really want to keep it into the late game so I can use it for its resource boosting potential. Because you get your tech up so early, I like to get a machine gun out early to help hold the line. send a squad out to do some capping down the left because I know most of his troops are out here on the right but I do have to be careful because that could be chased down by the WC-51. You do have to be careful against riflemen because they can pop that one and then anti tank grenade you out of nowhere, which can lead to the death of your 221. So be cautious and get a good feel for the timing in which riflemen hit their vet one. So because I haven't seen the N20, I'm expecting a Stuart, so I need to prepare for it now. So I'm going to get a Rakitten and try and get some mines down. Also, when it comes to the 223 usage, I'm going to try and keep a squad nearby for a Faust at all times. Oops. So he gets a bit careless here, loses a rifle squad and gets his WC-51 fausted which leads to a kill as well. If I didn't get the kill here I might have to consider going for double rakesons to deal with the double vehicle threat and I'd probably use them together in an attempt to just one shot and knock out my opponent's vehicles though sometimes I do split them as well. So here I use my troops as a distraction to his 50 cal to allow my MG34 to see up in the back. Then once his 50 cal is suppressed, my troop should be able to overwhelm it. I'm 
I need one more squad of Fox Grenadiers, you know. I get the Fox Grenadiers because I feel like a second machine gun isn't going to help me that much in this situation. I want another squad available to Faust the Stuart and cap up the map. At this stage though, you could go for something else. You could go for a second kid, as I mentioned earlier. Or if you're really hammering your opponent, you can go for a super fast tier 4. Try get that up, covering your cutoff, and try get a squad of Ogres out super quick. Another big scalp here thanks to good Rakitin positioning, WC-51 and the cavalry right from the side. So I should be way ahead at this stage but it's kind of still a 50-50 game, he's pushing really aggressively. It's very hard on the north spawn of Langriskaya as you may know. And generally I think the strategy is not very strong for this lieutenant tier US forces. Kill him. Oh, I can't. Ready to execute. Move us over there. Here. Ready to use this right now. So I decided to use the 223 as a resource cache now because at this stage I'm just not having much success with it. I'm having to be too defensive with it. It's too hard to use against the high penetration 50 cows, the Stuart being on the field, and it's not very effective against the buildings that he keeps jumping into on the right hand side of the map. So I'm just taking it out of the micro equation. It's too much for me to control this stage. And I want to start flooding in those resources, getting my Panzer 4 out as quickly as possible. Just slow as fuck. Need ISG for sure. So I didn't get a chance to use it this game, but emergency repairs unlocks at four command points. You can use that to help repair up your 223, keep the pressure on with it, and you don't have to get your stern pioneers involved, which is really nice. So I put my Shwee HQ in base, this way I can't get hit by any off maps, it's a little bit safer, but still covering my cutoff, which is nice. If things are going really well for you in the early game, I do sometimes like to get it in quite an aggressive position. And that way, if your opponent goes for like a late T70 or something, the counter push on the T70 will be nowhere near as effective as they won't be able to harass your fuel or cut off. So because I'm facing 250 cows, I decide to go for two infantry support guns. I find that often one by itself is just not enough to do damage to them. They can just, you know, take the barrage and then reposition. They're still on three models, still a big pain, and now you don't know where they are anymore. So in this case, I'm going for two. I'm quite low on fuel, despite having my cash down. So this move is actually not going to delay my Panzer IV, so it's a very safe investment. Oh, 
So I'm expecting a medium tank very soon, so I need a second raketin to help fight it off. If I had enough fuel at this stage though, I would be looking to get the Panzer IV. squad in one shot here because they were clumped behind light cover which is unfortunate but thanks to the double machine guns I'm actually holding on to territory pretty well and that's allowing my double infantry support guns to do the heavy lifting.
Finally have the resources for a tank and I decided to go for the Panther. It's more durable and I feel like I'm going to be in a 2v1 situation. And in that situation the P4 might end up dying. So the extra durability of the Panther will really come in handy. And I can rely on my double red kittens for the killing blows where the Panther falls down an outright DPS against tanks. Assembled and ready. Grenadiers established defensive positions during Select the machine gun upgrade on my Panther instead of the tank commander upgrade, which is one of the features of this commander. I'm a little bit low on munitions, so I'm unlikely to be able to use the artillery anytime soon. I want to be able to use my Panther on the flanks to force away squads quickly, and without the machine gun upgrade, I won't be able to do that. In situations though where you're up against something like double anti tank guns, being able to call in the artillery with your tanks during an aggressive push is super helpful. So this Tank command feature is pretty good, but it is situational which upgrade you want to go for. It's not an insta lock on the tank commander. Finally, get a kill on one of those 50 cows thanks to my double infantry support gun barraging, which I only noticed thanks to the audio cube, so very important to. If your music turned off, hear those audio cues much more easily. I think if I was just using the one infantry support gun, I wouldn't actually be going for the high explosive barrages. I'd try to use smoke more and then try to charge through the smoke or smoke and cap. But yeah, I think that that's harder to execute and maybe not leading to quite as good results with caps at a higher risk as well. So the second 76mm Sherman is on the field, I'm going to try play a little bit more defensively now and rely on my Rakitans ambushing from camouflage to do some surprise good damage, catch my opponent off guard and then try swoop in for the kill with the Panther rather than trying to be at all aggressive and trying to like hunt and overextend my Panther. Just going to play tight, try and defend, maybe get some mines down if I can because those 76mm Shermans are very mobile.
Ready for further orders. My support weapon play is now really paying off. I'm locking down two VPs pretty easily. The problem though for me is that I'm just about at my supply limit. You know, I do have the 223 off in the background that's still occupying my army size a little bit. So I don't quite have enough for another tank, which means it's going to be very tough for me to actually go and kill his tanks unless he, you know, runs into a kidnap ambush or something badly goes wrong for him. So, you know, whilst the support weapon play is uh, converting into a lot of territory control for me, getting a killing blow on my opponent is very tough. So I'm going to have to wind down the VP clock. Slight overextension from my opponent trying to destroy the deep from Rakitin, combined with the lucky timing of a push from my Rakitin on the far left VP, results in a Sherman going down here. A very important timing as well because the third Sherman just hit the field, and the three of them he probably could have overrun. Looking back, at this stage of the game it's possible I should have gone for a second panther here and destroyed the decrypt rocket myself, and that way I might have been able to finish my opponent off earlier. Grenadiers operational. Standing by driver. Advance report. Prepare for action. Enemy at 300 points. Run into the mine! Run over! Out of the 
stay with your kids. After deciding here to stay with Rakitans, I should have got an extra truck out and put down the mechanized HQ to help speed repairs on my Panther, that way my Stone Pioneers would be more free to plant mines. No, I might use the Rakitans together actually. So now I'm trying to weasel my Rakitans into a position where I can snipe off one of his vehicles quite easily, whether that be the more half track or one of his Shermans. Fuck, you're still in there? Oh my god! Heat rounds give plus 30% penetration and plus 30% damage. So in this game with my Panther against the 76mm Shermans, I don't really need them. It doesn't change the shots to kill unless I get some irregular damage source in there. Maybe like a mine or a Faust. So in those scenarios, I will try to use heat rounds, try and chop down the shots to kill. But otherwise, not really necessary. 
though they are very strong against things like Pershings, IS-2s, or in medium tank wars to try and guarantee those penetrations. of these. You know. So now he's got three Shermans again and I suspect he's above 100 supply. This is a very hard army for me to contain and I'm just trying to hold on now. Try and drain out the VPs. Hope that he makes an overextension or a mistake, otherwise I'm probably just going to get overwhelmed. Here I use the emergency repairs on my panther because I want to keep it at full strength otherwise I could easily get overwhelmed by the three Shermans. Emergency repairs is one of the key functions in this commander and you make sure you use it a lot especially in the late game because as you can see here there's not a lot to spend your munitions on if you're not using the tank commander artillery so you might as well save your stern pioneers some time and repair up using this ability. Also if you're in an extended fight if your tank takes a lot of damage early, you can pull it back, emergency repair it, and then bring it back in before the fire's over. It's a really strong tactic. God. Americans are wavering. They are down to 25 points. I decide to replace my Fox Grenadiers here. He's so long VPs, I just want to get that last bit to drain out. And I want an extra capping squad to just throw in the fire, basically. Though, I think if he had more VPs on the clock, even like up to 100, another Panther would be in order here. Because even though he does have, what, two AT guns and three tanks, I think I could have made it work, maybe sniped off a couple of the Shermans with double Panthers.
the attack. They are down to ten points. I bet you he was at like 110 supply there or some shit. He has such a huge army. I think that's why he went from water half track, because he could decrew it and get his army even further over 100. So that's it guys, look at my elite armor strategy. This game, the 221-3, didn't go buck wild. Sometimes you have a really good start to the match and the game's over in 10 minutes. You chase down lots of squads and wipe them on retreat. But it wasn't the case in this match, really hard fought game. Also good to see the strength of the double infantry support gun against machine gun spam. Usually that's very hard for OKW to overcome, like 350 cals all covering like one VP each. But with the double ISGs I was able to neutralize that very effectively this game. And I think that was probably my key to victory, combining that with my own team weapon play to lock him off the VPs. The VP count just quickly reversed was really good. And yeah, you get to see a little bit of uh, action with the heat rounds, when to use them, when not to use them, and the emergency repairs. Don't forget about that. Very good. Unfortunately, didn't use the tank commander this game, though I do use it, you know, in probably most of my games. Just didn't feel like it was that uh, important in this particular match. It's on the Panthers, fighting against the Shermans, but... It is a pretty strong upgrade and especially against double AT guns being used together to help them move in a big assault. I think it's a very strong ability. So that's it guys. Please leave some feedback about this format and I'll see you next time. Bye.